Hello? Yes? Filing from Budalangi. Yeah, quite pathetic, yes. Yeah, I can hear you. We'll be there soon, thank you. Swearing in ceremony. And real business is yet to begin. I'm doing a sign of here in Seattle. There's a gentleman who's saying hi to me. Hi. Sasa? I'm Alex Chamwada and I um, uh, was brought up uh, in uh, Elongo village that is Sabatia constituency in Vihiga county. There are no better images to capture the impact of this Budalangi disaster and it takes courage to get stories from this side. You might think this is a lake. No, it's somebody's land and in fact there were crops here. My father was a, a pastor in, a, I would say, a village pastor because it's not a big church he was uh, minister, ministering in, Pentecostal Assemblies of God. And uh, my mother uh, is uh, a real mentor, like my father, who was active in church. I'm from a peasant family, a humble family, a uh, humble background. Um, in a family of uh, 12, I'm the second born there is a girl ahead of me. But culturally, you know, in, in African culture, the boy seems to be the, 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 the person or, or, or the child where there's so much attention. <laughs> I grew up like any other child who has to go through the normal uh, those days when we would go to school walking, uh, barefoot, and then uh, Vinyasa, Kaptula, of course. <laughs> uh, that still happens in the schools nowadays. Um, I was brought up in a, in, in a strict environment. My parents were real disciplinarian. I would not just go out there and play football, enjoying like other kids. Uh, they would be strict on uh, I and my siblings being involved in uh, uh, house chores and also studying that they would really ensure that you are not playing around just anyhow you are you are serious on your studies you are serious on your books action kama umetazama sinema ya anaconda basi safari yetu huku budalangi ilikuwa yenye matukio sawia na yale kwenye sinema hiyo lakini hakuna cha kuogopa kwani kutafuta habari lazima ujitolee Alex Chamwada, KTN Leo, Budalangi. I went to St. Peter's Mumias High School. I would call it a Bundus school. People know uh, what I mean by Bundus. That is in Mumias. Um, and then I went to Moy University, also another Bund institution in the Bundus, the main campus of Moy University. Actually, in a remote uh, area, was in Gishu, about uh, 30 minutes drive from Eldoret Town. Uh, eventually, I got a scholarship. In Moy University, I did information sciences, so I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in information sciences. Information sciences, it, as it sounds, is about uh, managing information, and I majored in publishing and book trade. Oh, okay, and Asham. Oh my, <coughs> it's tough, man. And if you watched a movie titled Anaconda, those are the kind of adventures we went no, let me take again. We embarked on. I got a scholarship to undertake a postgraduate diploma in mass communication at the University of Nairobi. Later on, I worked hard and got another scholarship to do a master's degree in politics and the mass media at the University of uh, Liverpool, the University of Liverpool in 2004 to 2005. I graduated in 2005. This was just a swearing in ceremony, and real business is yet to begin. That will be after state opening, whose debt is the prerogative of President Mwai Kibaki. I wanted to be like uh, Leonard Mambombotela. I wanted to be like Bill Omala, if people can remember those names, Tido Muhando, BBC, and continuity announcers like Gladys Erude, uh, who are the others, uh, the late uh, Eddie Fondo really being behind the microphone. And my father inspired me when he would be on the pulpit my mother also was a church leader. When they stood there and, you know, giving announcements, delivering announcements, I just admired and wanted to be in, 
behind a microphone and announcing things. So that is what was, was in my mind. And I would listen to the radio a lot. I knew almost all programs on KBC, Swahili service, uh, and also the English service. I used to listen to BBC a lot, and my, my father knew my interest in the radio, so he would make sure that there are enough batteries. Kutano huu wa diani umewapanua kimawazo wa bunge, huku mawimbi ya mageuzi ya katiba ya kiendelea kufikia kilele chake. Lakini swali ambalo haliwezi kujibiwa kwa urahisi ni lini wa Kenya watapata katiba mpya. <laughs> na Rais Mwai Kibaki aliweza kufika machinani na hapa ni ile pengine na ito a door to door campaign manake hapa aliweza kutembelea mmoja wa wakulima mashuhuri mama mkongwe katika eneo hili la bunge la webuye it is with that in mind that uh, when I saw information sources among the choices when we were in form for now choosing our uh, courses to do or faculties to join, I thought this is it, this is about broadcasting. Little did I know that it was not about broadcasting. So joining Moi University, I was really disappointed. I was so down. I thought I've really made a mistake. Then, of course, there are those who were telling my father, your son made a mistake. Uh, what is this course is going to do? Just learning how to wipe and arrange books, because many people knew it. There are those who knew it uh, to be about uh, librarianship, information sciences, because they are, they are people in the village or professionals or teachers who understood it that way. So I was really devastated and uh, I thought now this is the end of me because I really wanted to be a broadcaster. Now I'm going into the wrong course. But eventually um, uh, the dean of the faculty explained to me and told me, no, you want to be a broadcaster? Yes, I think you want to be a journalist and you seem to have the talent. Journalism is not, uh, it's, it, it, with journalism you can enter through any field and this faculty or this course, Information Sciences, will give you a good background to be a good journalist in future. So I got to understand how one can become a journalist and then settled and took the course with, uh, with uh, the enthusiasm that uh, uh, anyone can think of. And tomorrow he will be in Weboye. Muskari Kombos, Muskari the chairman of Fort Kenya. I graduated from Moi University in 1996, and at that time, apart from volunteering as a broadcaster at KBC, I was uh, doing stuff or working with an NGO that was promoting reading among children, a reading culture among children in Kenya. It was known as the, the, the foundation for the publication of children's uh, books in Africa. I remember Professor Thomas Odiambo, who was uh, the founder of this foundation, was really a real mentor. He, he taught me so many things on, on, on how to just be yourself and uh, get a niche, uh, what you want to do. So. But I didn't grow in that area much in terms of uh, publishing. My interest was in broadcasting. So I continued to do voluntary work for KBC, uh, various programs. And there are many, many producers who helped me. I can't name all of them, but just a few like uh, Topista Nav Nav Navusoba. There was uh, Wanza was doing Kipindi Chawatoto. I was in that Kipindi Chawatoto, if, I don't know if you remember it. Uh, every Saturday at 8 on KBC. Uh, Mazingira programs, many current affairs programs. It is here in Oxford where Gidongo came to hide after he resigned from government last year. It is here where he compiled the controversial dossier on the Anglo leasing scandal. One day I got a scholarship to do a postgraduate diploma in mass communication. That is in 1998. So I went to the University of Nairobi. That was also another boost because then, remember, I did publishing, information sciences. But now at the School of Journalism, University of Nairobi, and then I went now deep into learning about journalism, the do's and don'ts as a journalist the skills as a journalist. Then I got an attachment now in the KBC newsroom in 1998. I remember joining same day with the Joa Geo, who is now at uh, Citizen, uh, the head of the editorial at Citizen TV. So we went together. And this was on a unique day. It was during the 1998 bomb blast in Nairobi, uh, I remember. So we entered when everyone was busy in the newsroom. 
So we were able to observe. Nobody's giving us stories, but, it's because, but that is enough. It gives you uh, uh, the entry point. But we eventually started doing stories. And then I got a temporary job with the KBC. Those days, they used to call it uh, artist. I was an artist. Barely two months after getting a, jo getting a job as an artist, and my first salary, by the way, was about uh, 11,000 Kenyan shillings. There were some deductions, and I think I would end up going home with eight thousand shillings that is late 1998 but early 1999 citizen radio began uh, came in town you know and it was a new thing there weren't many private stations then so I was the first among the first reporters of Radio Citizen and I remember joining on April Fool's Day that was on April 1st 1999 and that time it was unheard of people were like you are risking how do you go to a private station that's unknown people thought there was a uh, job security in KBC, but I risked, I went, and some who were in KBC then followed me. I remember Joa Geo followed me. Sophie Kenya was at KBC, followed me. Bernardo Tieno, the prominent uh, uh, broadcaster in sports, followed me. Uh, the who is who in these industries? Mr. Kudonga, BBC yeah, News, could you just citizen. tell us, how, what do you make of the talks that you've had for the past two days? I think it's gone extremely well. In what way? Very productive, very cooperative uh, committee. So I'm very happy. Which other ministers did you tap apart from Kiraitu? Who else did you tap? Is, is, is it true you've been protected? I by got the... an opportunity to go to the US at the Voice of America in Washington, D.C. for internship as seconded by citizen. So I spent three months there. Again, that was a milestone in my career because I covered the U.S. elections of the year 2000. Al Gore versus Bush, if you remember. So that introduced me to international reporting, networking. On coming back, Citizen was almost gone. I got an opportunity now to join KTN. I was called by the then head of uh, news, Isaiah Kabira, uh, who uh, gave me of an offer and I accepted. So I joined KTN in January 2001. Stayed there, get, worked hard, got a scholarship to go to the UK to study politics and the mass media in 2004. But in 2008, I resigned and joined Citizen TV again where I worked until 2014 when I quit employment and started my own company. Experience is every day thing. I, I would say you get to learn new things every day and all that make a complete journalist. But my best moment is going for internship at the Voice of America in Washington, DC. That's the spark that made this international chamada you are looking at. Because networking, is, I, I started networking, I started learning the importance of going international and looking at stories differently. Not just uh, a narrow-minded way of looking at stories. You, you look at, you give it a global touch and just creating stories from not what anyone would think. Being so creative and working hard and the real meaning of production, producing a nice TV story. And a battle with the British government. His lawyers filed a case the second one of my best moments, again, 2008 elections. So the 2000 and 2000 elections, US elections, I covered for Citizen. Left went to KTN, but by the time I was going to back to Citizen in 2008, there was another election now, the election that pitted uh, former President Barack Obama and the late uh, McCain. Again, I was in the thick of things. I traversed various cities, various states in the U.S., from Florida to Maryland to Chicago, various cities, various states. And I even witnessed the endorsement of Obama as the presidential candidate of the Democratic uh, Party. So uh, that, again, was a big, big boost in my career. Then later on came Haig. People know me for covering... Hague, and I was the pioneer in terms of just uh, educating Kenyans on what ICC is all about before the politics came. You know, once politics comes in, then it's a totally different uh, scenario. People are judge looking at things from the political point of view. But I had a, a free moment, free time for a while to just do my own stories, educating Kenyans on what ICC is all about and how it works. I would cite those ones, but again, I went out of my way to even venture into human interest reporting so that it was, life is not just about politics. I've covered stories about agriculture in Somalia, award-winning stories. I've covered apartheid in South Africa. So that's what I love, stories that are out of the ordinary. 
some of the things I would uh, remember and they were nasty in my career is, for example, covering the Kenya Airways plan, uh, plane crash in Abidjan. Covering the Kenya Airways plane crash in Abidjan, that is in uh, February 2000. I was part of the crew that went to cover. It was horrible. I mean, it was my first time to cover uh, a tragedy like that. And we went on the on the on the ocean and just seeing bodies coming out popping out it was a, a horrible scene and it affected me psychologically in fact we had to go through counseling some of us uh, it was really not good it was nasty so it was my first time to experience such and journalists go through such and they need counseling they are human beings like any other person horrible also is the 2007 2008 post election violence i was in rift valley it was bad. I witnessed it. I mean, people hacking others to death, maiming, and just seeing graves, seeing, I mean, bodies. It was terrible. Those are the two moments in my career that I can cite that were horrible. I've always wanted to grow horizontally in my career, not vertically. In any newsroom, you'll be told uh, so-and-so has grown by being a journalist and then an editor, managing editor, who knows, maybe uh, the general manager or the CEO. But learning from what I saw at the Voice of America and at CNN, at some point I spent uh, a month at uh, the CNN headquarters in Atlanta. I learned that journalists are journalists. So. I may have a boss who is probably barely five years in the career, but he's a good manager, can do better management than I. I'm a journalist. That's what I have, a, have passion for. I have networks. So I can grow horizontally, be paid even better, be facilitated, be given uh, I mean, um, funding for research, be given a good producer, so that I'm a soldier for that station. By being better on screen, it means the station is doing well. But if we leave the screen, all of us, then it means there is a lot of uh, 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 what, um, turning, I mean, changing people always, and it's not good for the screen. So I grew horizontally where I said, I must remain a journalist. If you want to pay me better, just pay me better as I grow horizontally. So, but then it reached a point, then I, I found that actually in Kenya, there is, it's a bit limited remaining in the newsroom for le forever because um, the, the programming and current affairs is a bit limited. And those days you had only primetime news. If you didn't appear in the 7 p.m. bulletin, if you didn't appear in the 9 o'clock bulletin, then even if you, you did a good story, it's nothing. So I wanted my own space. I wanted to grow by crafting my own program. And it was not easy at that time to get a program while I'm employed. So I decided I, I, I'll form my own company, use my networks, negotiate for my space to have space and that would give me the impetus and the room to even grow other talents while I'm outside. So building my own outfit I knew would give me the advantage to grow talent, equip myself, use my networks in my own style at, at, at my own pace and that for me I saw would be better growth than remaining in the newsroom and hoping I'll continue growing horizontally, which had come to a limit. While well, I was doing a sign off here in Seattle, there's a gentleman who's saying hi to me. Hi! Hey, sir. Sasa? Eh, uli juaja huyu ni chamwada? Wes, asante, bye bye. <laughs> that bridge behind me separates Norway and Sweden. Time now to depart for Kampala, right from Cornerbrook City at the Leesburg Executive Airport in Virginia, Northwestern University, Chicago. Kitu kikubwa tena. Kitu kidogo. Hi. On Daring Abroad, we feature Kenyans living abroad. Been working with about 20 people since the beginning of this year. By end of last year, had about 10 people only, but the team has grown to about 20. And we are, we are gender sensitive. You may not see ladies around, but we have ladies in our team. Some have gone out for some jobs or some shoot. Guys who supply lunch for us, yeah? yeah? This is normal. You've brought us some lunch, eh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
You can then hear uh, this gentleman has also brought some lunch for Charms Media staff. Vipi boss, eh? Lunch iko sawa? Wengine wamekula? Yeah. Uh-huh. Great. Wanapenda chakula yako? Wamependa sana. Sana? Okay. I had this idea of Charms Media and uh, uh, this is way back in 2010. I just felt I need an outfit. I need to start putting my act together because I'll not be in employment forever. And uh, em employment can be limiting. I wanted to be myself and just do my thing because I had so many ideas I would want to execute in a newsroom but you find either there's no space or there's no time or there are no resources or the editors think this is what we should be selling. And in my mind I thought there's so much more we can sell than what everybody has. I want to be um, different from the others and to be different is to have your own out outfit. So it's an investment idea that I had in mind. It was a startup. You may be on air, but you are stressed. You put a smile, but behind that smile, there is stress. You are undergoing things that normal people go through. Then the demands on us. People believe you have everything. You can give them everything. You can help them get a job. So that pressure, we undergo that pressure a lot. But it doesn't mean if I'm on TV or I'm meeting big people or I'm doing big stories, then it means I can give you anything you want. No. It's just a struggle like any other. And I mean, do you have the qualifications? I may give you leads to a certain job or a certain business, but I mean, it's just about uh, working hard like any other person. I'm not the chosen one uh, who, la who, I can, I, 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 who can just give you anything you want in life, no. So we undergo a lot of that pressure. Secondly, viewers on us so that you find you are not free. You, you have no privacy. Uh, and like, uh, if you are not a celebrity on TV, you may do certain things. You are on, you're going on with your your own activities, and nobody bothers. What I mean is this: sometimes I go out. I'm in a supermarket with the family. Family, my family wants time with me, but you find that people coming, greeting me, wanting to do selfies, and my family is there. They want us to do shopping. They're just waiting, keep waiting. Sometimes they give up and say, hey, Alex, continue with your fans. We've gone. My, my wife will say, I'm gone with the kids. We are going to do shopping. Join us when you are, you are done. But you see what you are doing, what I'm doing to the family also. They feel I'm not creating time for them. But I, we try to balance. At the same time, I don't want to look rude to my fans or the people want to greet me. The work can be quite demanding, especially when you're in the newsroom. When I was in the newsroom, there's so much pressure. We deal with... Uh, News is a perishable product. So the pressure and we work out of ordinary hours. I can tell you there are people who have ulcer in the newsroom. So you see them smiling uh, before the camera, but the pressure they undergo is quite a lot. Then the kind of stories we cover, some are really depressing stories, and you carry that with you. You go to your house, and maybe you then did a story, and you are watching that story yourself, and it can be quite depressing. There are those who see me abroad, and again, they see flamboyance. They see Chamwada who is enjoying adventure, fine. But again, I'm, on, I'm working. I don't have time to really go, go out and just relax, as many would think. So it's still pressure, and I have to deliver. If I go to London for one week, I want to utilize as little time as possible to gather as much content. Because I'm in business, so the less I spend, the better. I'm not salaried, uh, as people think, I'm not being paid a salary by KTN, but I'm paid as a content supplier. If I don't supply, I will not get paid. People see Alex Chamada on TV, daring abroad, the Chamada report, but I have a team of 20 who are producing this content. On to my legacy now, and I want to, to leave talent, a trail of talent behind me, because I know I'll not be on the screen forever. I've, uh, I want people to know that I trained people, that someone took over my show, someone worked with me. People grew because of me, people uh, learned from me. So I have uh, young people who are working with me and who you've already seen on air, Michael Simanji, uh, there is Elijah Mwangi, and the others who are upcoming. Now, only, those are the ones who are on screen, but there are others who are not on screen who I'm growing. And that is one of the legacies I want to leave. Secondly, I think I'm a pioneer in current affairs reporting as an independent producer. I've seen shows which uh, um, are, uh, fall under current affairs, but most of them are talk shows. Let me clarify what I mean. I'm a pioneer in 
reporting independently, producing independently, packaging programs, documentary style. Because most of the shows that we've had, which I produced independently, have been in the area of entertainment. But current affairs, my style, I was the pioneer, I think. Believe or not, this is KTN being watched in London, quite clear. This is East London, where quite a big community of Kenyans live, and they've been watching KTN, thanks for having acquired a satellite dish. Wazungu hawa, hawa mjui githongo, lakini hiyo reporti imeleta mzozo mkubwa nchini Kenya. Eh, nipeleke hivi? Rolling. This water is about six feet deep. And you know, it takes courage to do some of these things. You may think this is a lake, but it's not. It's somebody's land. And here, in fact, there were crops. And there we move. We are on a mission to find the story behind the Budalangi disaster. Yep. Alex Chamwada, Nikiri Potia KTN Leo, Kutoka Diani. I want to leave a legacy of believability, trust, a legacy of a professional. And I know being independent, I get involved in uh, consultancy jobs. I consult, I'm free, I can consult for a pastor, I can cons consult for a politician, I can consult for an NGO. But what am I doing? That work, I want to say, would not interfere with what I churn out on TV as content. The Kenya Faith Writers Network is a network composed of Christian authors, actually even uh, upcoming authors, not necessarily published, but um, people who have the desire in their heart to write based on the Word of God.